guys, it's Sam and this is my 2017 favorites. Beauty, makeup, life stuff, everything. So I meant in 2017 to continue to do my like seasonal favorites and I just dropped off on doing that. Let me know down below if you guys want me to try to continue doing that. I just felt like some people weren't really liking them and I like, I forgot to do them and then it'll be like halfway through the next season and it would just be a mess. So I also don't buy things enough to have monthly favorites and sometimes I barely buy enough things or start doing enough things or having enough things or whatever to do seasonal ones. So I don't know if just keeping it as like a yearly thing is a good idea or if maybe next year I'll buy more. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have like the long favorites videos like beauty gurus do, but I do have plenty of things that I used throughout the year that kind of like defined 2017. These are things that were mostly new to me in 2017 and I felt like were like the crowning achievement. So there's a lot of things that I still regularly use, like I have makeup in here that I'm not including that as like a regular thing makeup, but either I used it a lot in 2016 and didn't discover it this year or like I just didn't feel like it was this year's thing. You know what I mean? So I'm going to trade off between like life stuff and beauty stuff back and forth back and forth to kind of mix it up a bit and let's just get into it because I have a lot of stuff to talk about. The makeup palette for me for 2017 the entire year because I'm pretty sure I got it for Christmas last year was the Kat Von D Metal Matte eyeshadow palette. Hot damn. This I use every day in some capacity, but I use it for most of my makeup looks. If you guys are asking what's on my eyes, almost always it's this. Funnily enough, today it's not. It's the Melt Rust Stack, which might be in next year's favorites because I just got it in fall, so I wasn't including stuff that I like just got, you know? This is an all year thing, which is why it's in here. This was limited edition. I'm so sorry for those of you that didn't get your hands on it because it's, it's like the most beautiful, awe-inspiring thing I have ever seen. I mean, look, it has the like foiled eyeshadows up top and then it has the mattes on the bottom. I almost didn't get this. I almost didn't ask for this for Christmas last year and I would have been so upset because I use this all the time. I think you can create so many looks with this and I find it so inspiring and I like the like pops of metallic on the lid a lot and all the mattes and the Kat Von D shadows are some of my favorite formulas and it's just beautiful. I have not been very happy with a lot of her other releases as far as like palette releases since this. I'm not at all interested in the Saints and Sinners or anything like that. And I didn't get Pastel Goth or anything, but this man, this, this just speaks to me on so many levels. It's just my like aesthetic and then just and the insides are so wonderful and I will continue to use this like probably for all of 2018. Then for life things we have the Wonder Woman movie. I feel like is the defining superhero movie of this year, hands down. I was so blown away by it. I was not disappointed by it. I still think about it. I plan to own it. It is just groundbreaking and everyone knows. Like it's it, it's broken records. It's wonderful. I still think of the No Man's Land scene and want to cry. It's amazing. So the like movie experience of my year, to be honest. Then another beauty thing is we have my nails. So these are what I have right now for the holiday season. But I started getting fake nails this year and some people don't like fake nails and that's fine. And I didn't get fake nails ever before this year. I started getting them in September. And yes, that's a fall thing that I started doing, but I think it counts because these have like been like a defining thing. I talk with my hands anyway, and I feel like these accentuate that in a way that I really like. I get compliments on my nails literally twice a day from every cashier basically like i'm not exaggerating almost every cashier every like service staff like someone that would see your hands because you're like paying for something waitresses people at different jobs like everybody talks about my nails and no i don't do things just for compliments but like it's just one of those things that like brightens your day when you get so many compliments on something like that all the time and although i don't do these things on my nails i go to somebody but I get the designs and I tell them what to do, you know, so like I bring the inspiration and they really like me at my salon as well and they're always like, oh my gosh, what do you have now? So I just love it and I feel like this, like this year I've really come into my aesthetic, which I'll talk about a little more later, but this adds to that. Like these nails, I can't imagine myself without these nails. I feel like I've had nails like this for years. Like this is one of the big treat yourself decisions of 2017 and I am not mad. I'm very happy with it and I will continue to do it because I love them and they just like complete my look and my feeling and just like go with my personality. I just love them. Another media type thing is Stranger Things. So I didn't watch Stranger Things when it first came out, the first season, and I haven't caught up in the second season so I'm really sorry because don't talk to me about it, but the first season I didn't watch until like this spring or summer. Oh my god, I love it so much. It's one of my new favorite TV shows. The fact that we haven't 
caught up on it is a goddamn crime. I want to catch up on it. But somebody else that I was watching it with um, hasn't been very motivated. And your girl would have watched it within a weekend and now we haven't. And it's like out of the season for it because I feel like it was, you know, it's very fall, even though I watched it before, like the summer. But it's very fall and I was so excited and we only watched like two episodes and I'm, I'm planning to watch it during the Christmas season, like when we go home. So for all you know, I could be watching it right now when you're watching this. This is being pre-filmed, but that is one of my goals to get it watch before the end of the year because I miss my kids and I love them so much. I talked about this in a recent empties, but the Stratia Liquid Gold is a wonderful moisturizer. I'm going to use the tiniest amount so you guys can see. Yes, it is bright yellow, but this is the consistency. So the yellow like dissipates, but it's so nice and it has like ceramides and fatty acids in it and stuff. And it's really good for dry skin or dehydrated skin and it doesn't really have a scent to it at all. It is just like plain unscented, good for sensitive skin, good for everything, and just like brings so much moisture to your skin. And this has saved my life with my dry skin. I use it morning and night and I adore it. It doesn't make me oily or anything like that, it doesn't break me out. I love it so much. Then we have Dragon Age Inquisition, which I've talked about on this channel before and all my other channels, but I have been a Mass Effect fan for years previous. Mass Effect is still my favorite of the two franchises for Bioware, the, like the two main franchises for Bioware, honestly. So Mass Effect is still my favorite, but oh man, has Dragon Age come really close? If not, like, are they equal? I don't know. Are they equal for different reasons? I don't know. But I, this is the year of Inquisition. I played Inquisition twice, back to back, which I do not do with games hardly ever, except for Mass Effect and Dragon Age. So back to back, back to back. Like it's ridiculous. I never do that. I get bored. I never do that. So this has been the year of the Dragon Age Inquisition and I am not mad. I have listened to the soundtrack, I have cried, I have looked at the tags, I am so pumped for the fourth one when that eventually comes out in like five years. I am ready. But I, I like, I missed that. Even just a couple days ago, I finished my last playthrough of like, fit all the way through to Trespasser, maybe a month, a month and a half ago, and I was like, I should start playing Inquisition. I was like, you just finished it. You just finished it. But I missed them. This is another thing I talked about in my recent empties, but it's the Obaya Naturals Curl Hydration Spray. This stuff, I've gone through like six bottles of this. I use it in the morning to like rehydrate my hair and scrunch it a little bit and bring the life back in, moisturize it, all that stuff. And I think it makes my hair look really good. I'm never disappointed. I'm never like, oh, it's too sticky or oh, that made it frizzy now. It was too much moisture or too little moisture or whatever. It's perfect. It has a nice herbally watery scent to it that just wears off. It doesn't like stick in your hair and make be like, oh, this is conflicting with my like perfume or anything. It's awesome and I will continue to repurchase it. But this was like my best find of 2017. I tried to find other like hydration sprays throughout the year and nothing compared to this so far. My next thing is Lululemon leggings, which I know is a splurge, but oh man. I now own four pairs that I've bought throughout the year because like they're expensive. They're, they're expensive and I know, but they last. I don't put them in the dryer or anything like that and I lift in them. So I lift weights, that's my thing, that's what I do. And these make you look amazing. They're super comfortable, they're really well constructed, I never feel like they're gonna rip or anything like that. I've had nothing but good, positive stuff from them. So these I think are one of my favorites. These are the All the Right Places pant. I got these a size too big when I first got them. I think these are, yeah. These are a 10 and I could have gotten an 8 back when I first got them and could probably get an 8 or even a 6 now. But these are high-waisted and they have the really high waistband so they like suck everything in and make you look like super good. It's like up above my belly button, which is what I want. These are crops and I also have ones that I'm wearing right now that are not all the right places, but they look like all the right places. They're like a mix between all the right places and the Align pant, which if you guys are Lululemon fans, you know what I mean. But they have like a different fabric to them, but they also have like the tightening, high waist, whatever. These are actual pants, so they go all the way to my ankles for winter and they're super comfortable and I'm wearing them right now because I didn't feel like changing. But I love these probably the most. Then I just bought some of the Aligns, which are like so comfortable and so amazing. They're the Align pant that I got there as well. Not as like suck in compression-y, but still look really nice, make your butt look like so good, like oh my god. And then the first pair that I ever bought was the Wonder Under crop. In the summer I wear crops, and now in the winter for the first time ever I'm wearing like the pants, like the full pants, which is crazy. 
These also have a, the like compression to them, but these aren't as high waisted as I would have liked. I think I should have got like high times or something. But these are amazing, and I've had these since like April or May of this year. And then the pants I just got in November, but have loved. So Lululemon's man, they're a splurge. A two of these I got at the outlet, so they weren't as expensive, but they're still pretty expensive. If you can't afford to like invest in your fitness gear, that's totally fine. I choose to because I spend a lot of time in it and this is really like long lasting and not sheer and I can squat in it, they're squat proof. And they just make me look awesome. And I only ever get the black, so I don't know how sweat proof any of these are. I just, I'm always afraid I'm gonna look like I peed myself if I get like any other kind from sweat. I'm not a huge sweater, but like it makes me nervous. So I only ever get these kinds, but I've heard amazing things about other ones. I'm not gonna try them on for you because there's a million and a half fitness gurus that wear these all the time that you can look up and find. I'm not doing that. But they make your butt look awesome, man. And they just make, like, everything look great, poppin', amazing. I go into Lululemon, I try things out, I'm just like, oh my god, it looks so good. It's great. This was really the year for Kat Von D and me, man, because the other thing is the Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipsticks. I actually own four, but I lost one of them. Mari sending it back to me because I left it uh, in her purse at Y'all Fest. <laughs> so, oops. But... These are the three that I have right now. So I actually own Haze 1 and Haze 2, which are limited edition. And then Witches, which is the black that I wear like all the time. And then Dagger. And I want to get more, but I have other liquid lipsticks that are like similar shades to some of the ones that I want from her. So like, I don't need to get them. But I really like this formula. It's not my favorite, but some of my, like my actual favorite formula is from a brand that I don't buy from anymore. And I don't want to like support in any way, but if you read my description boxes, you will sometimes see uh, that brand pop up. But that's just because I bought them a couple years ago and I'm not gonna throw them out because money, you know? But these are the brand that I reach for the most now because I think they have the most interesting colors and it's cruelty free and vegan and everything. And I like just like the look of these like tubes and everything. And they wear really well on me. I know some people say that like they didn't like some of the like ones, but all of the ones that I have wear really well and don't like gum up or get nasty. And they're just like any other liquid lipstick where you can't like reapply a ton because they just get gross. Like that's with any of them. But I really like these. They don't dry my lips out like a ton. I mean, any of them dry your lips out, but like they're not super bad. I like some of them I've tried lately that have been like horrible and so uncomfortable. I just forget that these are on and I love them and I love the colors and they're so pretty. This might be a weird one, but it's my toothbrush. So I got one of the fancy, like this is the Philips Sonicare. I don't even know which, which kind this is. It's one of the like electric toothbrushes. And I th got this because in the spring, I was noticing like my gums were hurting and I feel like my teeth have gotten like a little bad since chemo but because chemo just fucks up your teeth kind of. It stains them and just like it's nasty. Chemo can be nasty but it saves lives so it's important. But this is amazing and I love them and I feel like it's really helped my teeth. It helped my gums. Within a week of using this my gums no longer hurt and my gums were hurting like every time I brushed my teeth before and I got first the gum health toothbrush head and then now I'm using the whitening one and I've noticed like a little bit of whitening not like you'd notice with like professional whitening but like enough and I love this and it, it's still kind of where you you put on where well, I hear that and it beeps for each like section or like it it unvibrates so it's like zzz, zzz, to make you switch and I love this a ton I'm sure it makes my dental health like way better and yeah so like for every 20 seconds it tells you to switch so you know that you're brushing your teeth for the correct amount of time because I know damn well that I didn't brush my teeth for the correct amount of time when I was using a manual toothbrush. I didn't. This forces me to and I love it. And it's such like an adult thing to say and like talk about as like a 2017 favorite, but I love it. We have the Benefit Gimme Brow. Now this is in the color three and the reason I love this is because it has the teeny teeny tiniest little brush head. And this has little fibers in it so it adds some body to your brows and I love it because like look like it's the size that it needs to be. So I adore this. I've used other brow gels and tinted brow gels and the, the wand is huge. It's like a mascara wand and it's like, hi, my eyebrows are not that big. Like they're just normal size. They're not like too big or too skinny or anything like that. So like I need a smaller one and this is really great and it thickens them and like fills them in really nicely. So I use this in combination with the Anastasia Brow Wiz to like draw lines at the end to make it like extend it a little bit. And it's like the perfect bra combination. So I will probably continue to buy this unless there's another brand that's like very similar, same little tiny, tiny wand, but this has been great. I have two bands that I feel like have defined this year. The first one is Dorothy. There are two songs by them that have really just defined this year and whenever I'm in a bad mood, I listen to them. Their album is Rock Is Dead. 
and I just, one of them is on a playlist for if I ever write a book. This is like one of the theme songs. This is Raise Hell. And it speaks to me at a deep emotional level. It sounds like Coyote Ugly and this kind of like girl rock is what I've been feeling this year. The song by them is on my lifting playlist and that's Missile. And this is also not only my lifting playlist, but like my theme song for Vanguard Friendship in Mass Effect. Oh my gosh, you guys don't even understand how many times I've been like mad about something or like going to fight someone with my words, not with my fists, and played this and been like, all right, soak this into your soul because you're gonna fucking fight someone. I love it so much. They're my favorite. The second band is Paris, and I have loved them since 2016, but 2017 had a new album come out, and it just mm, speaks to me. I literally like like their entire albums. Both of their albums, I like every song. Obviously, I have songs that I like a little more than others, but generally speaking, their whole album. Like, their whole first album, White Noise, I can't even pick necessarily a favorite song. <laughs> The first song I really like from their new album is Heaven, and I really started listening to this right before Echo War came out, and that was like my theme song for it. Do you feel it? Like from the beginning? Oh yes, it made me so happy. And the things I was envisioning before like Echo War actually came out and disappointed me, but that was like the song that I wanted to like be for that. The other one is Separate. And it just has like such an atmospheric vibe to it. Again, if I ever write a book, there's a couple that I like think about in my head. And this song is like this. But I shouldn't talk about stuff like that because like then you guys are gonna think I'm gonna write a book or something, I'm not. But like, listen to this song and like, think about your OTP. Like, it's it's so good. It's so good. I shouldn't probably play it in the background because like copyright and whatever, but, and you're probably not gonna be able to hear it that well anyway. But listen to those songs because they were like <laughs> some of my favorites. Dorothy and Paris in general, like all of their albums they've all made were my 2017 music favorites. And also the Trespasser theme, blank soulless Trespasser theme. I listen to that a lot. A lot. My other 2017 favorite is this haircut, okay? And I haven't had it for that long, but I've needed it back. I've had like short hair for most of 2017 and I was trying to grow it out and I've talked about this a little bit and I actually have a video I think coming up more about this and like my curly hair journey in general, but I have a lot of other pictures I have to insert into it, which is why it hasn't come yet. I'm really sorry, it's happening. But my short hair is like a defining feature, again, kind of going with my aesthetic like I was talking about earlier. Like this is the hair I'm supposed to have. This is the hair I'm happiest in. This is the happiest I've ever been with my hair. The most like myself I've ever felt. It makes me like so happy and I can't imagine having like any other hairstyle. Like I liked my long hair just fine. I would have rather not lost my long hair, but now that I have, it's like I've gotten the hairstyle that I would have never ever cut myself without knowing. And now it's like I have the style that I want. And after it was growing out, I was like, nah and put it back down to this, and like, I just feel so free. You have no idea. Another life favorite is Kodiak Cakes. These are amazing. And if you follow any kind of like fitness guru, you'll probably know because I talk about these and that's how I heard about them. I eat Kodiak Cakes for dinner four or five days a week, if not more. <laughs> like literally. I have this, I have tempa bacon, and I have a couple of eggs, and it's awesome. So these are protein-packed buttermilk pancakes, you can also make waffles, and a half of a cup, which makes about three flapjacks, has 14 grams of protein. So like I said, your girl lifts, and these are awesome. Hello, this is Sam from the future, but also Sam of the past, because this was filmed after I filmed the other video, but way before you're seeing it. It's weird. But a little bit of the footage got cut off, so here I am. But basically I was saying that the Kodiak cakes are awesome, I have them multiple times a week, and they taste just like buttermilk, pancakes, they're awesome. I don't even need to use milk or eggs or anything. You can add that in if you want to, but like the consistency is great. They're super easy to make, really good for a quick like breakfast for dinner type situation and they're bomb. The next thing is actually a skincare method. So I've talked about this in my like skincare videos and stuff, but it is the multiple skin method. So 
three skin, five skin, seven skin, whatever. What that means is because in Korean skincare they call their hydrating toner skins sometimes, which is a weird thing, but I've gotten used to it. And it's just layering on very thin layers that are hydrating, thin hydrating layers. And that's really helped to get my skin in check. My skin, I've definitely discovered is more dry, like I've talked about recently. So having these lighter, like lots of lighter layers as far as hydrating things has helped a ton. So I end up using a toner where I use two skins of it, so I use two layers and I usually pat it out, which is why I'm making this motion. And then I have another one that I follow up with that's three. So I will do multiple thin layers and that really helps instead of globbing like thicker layers on, the tons of thin layers help to really sink into my skin and hydrate. That's been helping my skin a ton. Now back to past, but also super past me. The next thing is my Hydro Flask, and I've actually been using this technically since 2016, but then I lost mine. So I got this when I had cancer and I needed it for chemo, because you need like to really take your water and take to the next level. And I'm a person, people are gonna probably make fun of me, but I need like freezing cold water, and I also don't like water that's been sitting out for more than like maybe an hour or two. Kind of like that kid in Signs, I'm pretty sure, because I feel like there's floaties in it. Like, not that there's dirt, it's just the nature of, like, having a house and it being, like, dusty and there's just stuff in the air. But I always feel like there's a film, even though I know there's not, of, like, stuff on the top of it if I've, I'm using an open container. So I have to have something that's closed. I know that's, like, super weird, but it's just how I roll. But having this with me means that I drink a ton more water. Some days I'm really bad, like, if I don't keep it with me or, like, I just forget. But... I always drink a whole one of these when I'm working out and then I drink another one. So I shoot for two full things of these a day. I think this is 32, uh, yeah, 32 ounces. This is the 32 ounce wide mouth. But this, it's a hydro flask, like I said, because it keeps it cold. So this is like insulated like metal and it keeps your beverage cold. Or there's ones that also keep them hot. You can also use this for hot, but I don't mix hot and cold beverages. I only use these for water. But this keeps your stuff cold for 12 hours at at least so I love it and it makes me so happy and I drink way more water than I ever did before having this usually I get at least one drink if not two on days that I work out I usually drink two on days that I don't work out it's closer to one but it would be zero if I didn't have that another beauty thing we have the diva clips so these are the diva curl like root lifting clips they're not anything super special I did buy the diva curl ones just because I wanted like the actual ones but I also have the smaller ones I'm gonna talk about this. I actually did talk about this in my curly girl routine, so you guys will have seen them. But you stick them in your hair when it's wet and it dries with more lift to the root. So my hair, I have a lot of it, but it's thin and it will tend to, like, it's thin strands, but I have a lot of it. It's funny. So this will tend to just like droop a little more because it just like the st individual strands tend to get weighed down. So this gives it the lift that I want along the root and I love it. So I use these along like the hairline in the back and then I use these along the hairline in the front. They're smaller. I got them from Sally Beauty Supply. They're not the Diva Curl ones, but Diva Curl is who originally thought of it and I got the actual Diva Curl clips even though they're probably too overpriced and you can get some from the like Sally Beauty or something, but either way, that whole method is what I like. Then we have my jewelry. So I have been frequenting a place, it's called Holy Mountainism. I think is the jewelry place. It's actually a Philly store, but I've never been to the Philly store. They're on Instagram. I will link their Instagram down below. But I have gotten two of their rings so far. Both of these were gifts. No, this one was a gift. And then this one I bought myself. But one is the barbed wire ring, which I love. And the other one is this rose cluster ring. And I'm actually asking for more for Christmas that are like, for like my thumbs and everything. I just want like a handful of rings that are all like these kind where it's like, if I hit you, which again, I'm not physically violent, so I wouldn't. But if I did, it'd leave like little imprints. I don't know. My aesthetic, I'm sorry, it just is. So these like aged looking pieces are amazing and I love their whole like brand. They do have some stuff that I don't really approve of or really like that's like really like druggy kind of culture stuff that's just like, I'm like, eh. But a lot of the things is more like this like grungy goth look to it, which I really appreciate. Then we have this brush, which I had to mention because I've been using it all year. This is like the brush that I use every single time, but I'm pretty sure they've gotten rid of it now And because I was looking for another one at Ulta the other day, but it's the Real Techniques. It says 203 on it. So it's just like the MAC 207, I'm pretty sure. I have the MAC 207, but I find the MAC one, oh God, yeah. Two, it's like the MAC 217. So they're 
comparable. But I find the MAC one a little more scratchy, but I might have to start buying the MAC again because they don't, I think, have these. But these are cruelty free because I'm pretty sure they're synthetic fibers. But it's very, very soft and it's wonderful for blending. I think it was like their like mixed metal collection. It's the Real Techniques like mixed metal, but I think people thought they were overpriced and didn't get them. I love them. I think they're super high quality, but I don't think they make them anymore, which makes me so sad. Then another fitness related thing, because being in the gym has been a little more of a thing this year than it has been in previous years, but these are Bluetooth headphones. Now these are the MPOW ones, and they just are Bluetooth. They connect to your phone, and then you put them. I don't even have them on the right way. Put them on, you do this, and you put them in your ear, and then you don't have to worry about a cord at all. It's amazing. It doesn't like fall or like, I always ripped my headphone cords like out when I was doing anything and they would just get stuck and it would be awful. These are awesome. They last about like three gym sessions so I have had times where like they've been dead when I've gone or they've died really quickly where like it looks like there's like, about half battery life left and then they die which is shitty but they are pretty cheap on Amazon. I think they're under $25 I want to say and they're not as expensive like the Beats and like all of those so I really like those. I wouldn't mind investing in a like higher quality pair in the future, but for right now those things are amazing and Bluetooth headphones are where it's at. I cannot imagine being corded again in my life. I did not need that kind of like restraint and boundary in my life. I can walk away from my phone. It's great. It's great. I love them. And lastly, my signature perfume that I've used all year, I think I might have even used it last year, but I think I got it for Christmas last year. It's the Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black. Mmm, this is amazing. I really want the Nirvana Bourbon as well, the Nirvana Black Bourbon, Nirvana Bourbon, and that one is also like the similar scent, but this is more of a musky, woodsy, earthy smell. It's so amazing. I, I like these kinds of like darker scents. You can actually get the Nirvana Black and the Nirvana White and mix them together, and I've done that in like the summer and stuff. Um, I like the Nirvana White enough, but this is like, this is me, man. I used to really like the, um, I think it was Burberry Brit, which is another scent that's kind of like this, but this just smells so good. I don't know what it is about these kinds of like more musky scents, but I love them. The bourbon one has like a fire, like wood, oak barrel kind of scent to it, which I really like as well, but I can't really justify when I still have this. I just get the roller balls. Like I don't even know how much is left in here, honestly, but this, I've gone through one before. This is my second one. I love this. I just put it here, put it here, uh-huh, uh-huh, and I'm good. I'm good to go. But I wouldn't mind getting like an actual like full spray bottle of it, but perfume is freaking expensive, man. It's expensive. So this, and then maybe next year we'll have the bourbon in there, but this is my signature scent and I love it. It makes me so happy. So that is it for my 2017 favorites. There's a few things in here that, like I said, if I started using them towards the end of the year, I didn't want to include them because I don't really consider them like full, full favorites. These are like some of the defining things life-changing things of my year. So comment below, let me know some of your 2017 favorites for like beauty and like lifestyle and all of that kind of stuff. My favorites videos for all of my books and stuff will be in January. It is coming, I promise. And a lot of people put their book stuff up in December. I don't because I read until the bitter end and I don't want to not include something on that list. So you will get that all in January. January is one of my favorite times of the year, video wise for that reason, because I talk about all that kind of stuff. So book stuff is coming later. This is life stuff. Comment down below, let me know some of your favorites from the year. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.